your maternal grandfather was bald, so that means you are going to be bald too. That theory right there left me with chronic anxiety ever since I was in elementary school when my elementary school teacher was teaching a lesson on genetics. That's right, this is my grandpa right here. As you can see, he is bald and he became bald at an early age. So, according to my elementary school teacher, was this idea that I would start becoming bald or at least showing signs of male pattern baldness by age 30 or before that. I remember going through high school like, man, we only have so much time left, we only have so much time left. But, as you can see right now, I am 33 years old and I haven't showed any signs of male pattern baldness. I've actually had this exact same hairline ever since I was 23. What did I do? Is it some products that I've been using for well over the past 10 years? Is it some lifestyle things I've been doing? Or is it just coincidence? It might be one of those. It might be a combination of all three. But first, I want to explain to you where this idea came from. But you gotta focus. So this whole entire theory, if your grandpa on your mom's side is bald, then you will be bald too, has to do with chromosomes, which are responsible for passing down genetic traits. Eye color, height, hairline, etc. Males typically have an X and a Y chromosome, while females typically have two X chromosomes. So we each get one chromosome from each of our parents. Now important to this theory is it is thought that the male pattern baldness gene is heavily on the X chromosome. Now my mom gets two chromosomes, one from each parent, because she is a female, she gets one X from my grandma and one X from my grandpa. That means according to this theory, she is surely going to get that X chromosome that passes down that baldness trait. Now, because I am a male and I get one chromosome from each of my parents, I have to get a Y chromosome from my dad because my mom doesn't have one to give. So I by default, get this Y chromosome right here. Come on guys. And then by default, that means I have to get an X chromosome from my mom. But wait a minute, look at this. For some reason, my elementary school teacher said with a sure attitude that if our grandpa on our mom's side was bald that we would surely be 100% bald. But look at this guys, my mom has two X chromosomes, one from my grandma. So I get one of these from my mom, but it's not a 100% chance. It's more like a 50-50 shot. If I only would have done my due diligence as a kid and drew this chart out, I could have saved myself 20 years of anxiety. And then if I would have dialed up the internet and tried to die, well, actually, there's probably no information on the internet at that time about this type of stuff. So I was gonna say I would have realized that male pattern boldness might be a little bit more complicated than just this. So diving into this further, according to the studies, even if I certainly got the male pattern baldness gene, which is referred to as the AR gene from my grandfather, it wouldn't be a 100% certainty I would be bald. It would just be 2.2 times more likely I would be bald than if I didn't get that gene. And on top of this, a more recent review from 2017 found that it isn't just this one gene responsible for male pattern baldness. There may be at least 63 genes, and only six of these 63 were found on the X chromosome. So it turns out baldness might be more polygenetic than I was told when I was a kid, meaning it's more complicated, involving multiple chromosomes, multiple genes, etc. But what if I did draw the short straw and I should be bald right now and I've actually just been fighting the baldness with some certain products and things I've been doing throughout the years. So right now you guys probably really want to see this. I'm going to share with you the products that I've been using for well over 10 years pretty much on a daily basis that might have something to do with a solid hairline or just maintaining hair health. So the first product that I've been using for well over 10 years now, seriously, every single day, this is the only shampoo that I use, is a biotin infused shampoo, one by Avalon Organics. However, this shampoo also has other ingredients such as rosemary leaf oil, and I was talking about this in an other video, but rosemary oil, the essential oil, has actually been compared to minoxidil, which is a topical drug solution that can help preventing male pattern baldness. And then this shampoo also does have another extract from Sol Palmetto, which can block DHT, which is a hormone that is typically thought to be responsible 
for male pattern baldness. But how much is in this shampoo? I don't know. Is it actually enough to be effective? I don't know. Do I respond to it? I don't know. I've just been using this for the past 10 years and I'm not attached to this one by any means. I mean, there's still preservatives in here like sodium benzenate. Ideally, I would want something with zero preservatives. It smells kind of like a car wash, nothing special. I don't care. All right, here we go, cat's gonna be out of the bag. You guys can make fun of me as much as you want and say I'm weird, but you know what, I don't even care. I don't even care at this point, I don't care. So what do I do that's so weird, but I've been doing for well over 10 years now? Putting lotion in my hair. <laughs> but not just any lotion, this lotion right here, MSM lotion. And now over the past several years, probably about like going on seven years now, I've been using this one by Sunstar Organics because there's no harsh preservatives in here. They really only preserve it with grapefruit seed extract and tea tree oil. But MSM methyl sulfonyl methane is like an organic sulfur. And I've been just weirdly interested in this sulfur for the longest time. But every single day when I get out of the shower, I take a pump of this and I put some on my forehead and I push it back in my hair. I go to bed, I sleep in it. And then when I wake up, I have this crazy looking hair right here, but it's held up because of this MSM lotion right here. It just has some like thickness to it. So yeah, I do not use any freaking product in my hair. I don't use any gels, paste, or any of that crap. Well, I shouldn't say ever, okay? There is this one product I've been using. No sulfates, parabens, lanthates, whatever. There's, I got the most natural hair product I could if I ever really have to style it for like going to a formal event. But 99% of the time, this is all I use and I don't care. It's out of the bag now. You can make fun of me. I'm rubbing lotion in my hair. Besides the products, I was gonna share with you some potential lifestyle things I may have been doing that could have helped me keep or maintain or grow healthy hair. Is it good sleep and stress management? Well, as you can tell by the redness in my eyes right now, I'm not always getting the best sleep. In fact, it's usually pretty poor. So I cannot say I've been getting the best sleep all the time. Also, when it comes to stress management, I am not the best person at managing stress. And I am lucky, I'm lucky that the stress I've been holding on to hasn't been accelerating male pattern baldness in my head. There is something called the galia in the head that is this fascia. And if you look at the pattern of the galia and how it holds stress, it's literally in the same pattern as male pattern baldness. And there's this idea out there now that if you're super chronically stressed all the time, that might have more to do with male pattern baldness than anything else because of this tension in the head. And there's actually an idea that male pattern baldness can be reversed if you give yourself the proper head massage on a daily basis over several months to loosen up that galia and just help things grow back. That is a deeper topic I could look into and make a video on if you guys wanna see. But no, I have not been the best at managing stress. I've been trying to manage stress, but like over these last 10 years, I've not been the best. Now, another lifestyle thing I do that could be playing to good hair health is red light therapy. I did make that red light therapy video where I showed you guys in that video. It does look like I, I have some increase in hair thickness on the back of my head. However, I do have to say, it's not like I had a huge bald spot on the back of my head and then I did red light treatment and it was gone. It was just like, it looked thicker after I did the red light treatment. And then there's tons of studies on these red light wavelengths and their prevention and their ability to potentially regrow back hair. So that might be something new that I've been doing, but that's only over the past year that might be contributing to good hair health. Bonus, there is a time where I lost hair but grew it back so much thicker than it was before. If you guys want to hear that story, because it's kind of a stupid and a long story, I just don't want to talk your ear off right now about, let me know in the comments. It's very silly. Maybe I'll make it for you next week. And maybe we'll dive into the theory behind why it grew back so much thicker. But when it comes down to it, I guess the conclusion of this video is no. If your grandpa on your mom's side is bald, that doesn't necessarily mean you'll be 100% likely to be bald. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey, remember, you know what? At the end of the day, if you're going bald or you want to be bald, like really, who even cares? Baldness is cool. All the cool guys are bald. So like, yeah, whatever. But if you're interested in just weird stuff like I am, then hey, welcome to the club. Hope you all have a great day. Peace. I will see you all in the next video.